Megan, for God's sake, don't drink so much. Ah. You hear me? You're going to be sick like it was last night. Ah, that's good, George. Ah, you drink some. You drink some too, then, George. I don't know if this water's any good. It's kind of scummy to me. What the fuck? Look at that wrinkles. Look what I got, George. Tastes all right. Just doesn't seem to be running much, though. You ought not to drink water when it ain't running any. Hell, you drink water out of the gutter if you were thirsty enough. You know, I bet you we could have rode that bus right up to the ranch. That bus driver didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Just a little stretch down the highway, he says. Just a little stretch. Damn near four miles. I bet you he was just too lazy to pull up to the ranch gate. Just too damn lazy. I wonder if he wasn't too lazy stopping Soledad at all. Just a little stretch down the highway. George? Yeah. Where are we going, George? She forgot that already, did you? So I got to tell you again, Jesus Christ, you're a crazy one. I tried not to forget George honest. All right, listen. I'll tell you again, because I ain't got nothing better to do with my time. I'll just tell you stuff so you can forget it, and I can tell it to you all over again. I tried, and I tried, George. But I didn't forget about the rabbits. The hell with them rabbits. Can't remember nothing but them rabbits. You remember us sitting in that gutter on Howard Street watching the blackboards? What was we doing? Them girls come by and you say, Ah, uh, well, never mind that, never mind that. You remember us going into Murray and Ray to us getting our work cards and bus tickets? Sure, George, I remember that. George? Yeah. I ain't got mine. I must have lost it. You never had none. I got them both right here. You really think I'd let you carry your own work card? That's right. Put it right here. My side pocket. What'd you take out of that pocket? Anything in my pocket, George? Yeah, I know there ain't. You got it in your hand now. What you got in your hand? I ain't got nothing, George. Come on, give it here. Just a mouse, George. Mouse? A live mouse? Yeah. <laughs> I did. I found it. I didn't kill it. Give it I here. Found it like that. Give me that, George. Give it here. What you want with a dead mouse anyway? Just stroking it with my thumb when we weren't walking along. Well, you ain't petting no mice while you're walking with me. Now let's see if you can remember where we're going. Jesus Christ. Well, listen, we're going to work on a ranch, like the one we were on up north. Up north? Yeah, up in Weed. Oh, sure, I remember. I remember the Weed. We're going to go and we're going to see the boss. It's about a quarter mile down the road. See the boss. See the boss. I'll go in and give him the work cards. You ain't gonna say a word. You're just gonna stand there and not say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing, George. All right. If he finds out what a great bastard you are, we ain't gonna get no job. But if he sees you work, before he hears you talk, <coughs> set. Got that? Got that, sure. All right. Now, what you gonna say when we go in and see the boss? I ain't gonna say nothing. All right, good boy. Now, say that over and over a couple times so you won't forget it. I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. All right, you ain't gonna do no bad things like you done in the weed either, are you? I think I done in the weed. See, we got that too, did you? Oh, George didn't run us out of weed. Run us out of hell. We ran away. They was looking for us, but they didn't catch us. Oh, I remember that. That almighty, you're a lot of trouble. I could get along so easy and nice if I didn't have you on my tail. I could live so easy. George? Yeah? You're going to work on a ranch? All right. Well, you got that. <laughs> We're going to stay here tonight. Because 
So what? I want to sleep outside. Sure. Are you going out to the ranch to get some supper? Yeah, we'll go there. Tomorrow we'll go there. Tonight we're going to stay right here. Because I want to. Tonight we're going to lay right here and just look up at the stars. I see trash machines on the way down. That means we're going to be bucking green bags. Busting the gut looking up at bags. Tonight, there ain't a green bag or a boss in the world. Tonight, tonight the drinks is on the house. Nice house we got here, huh, lady? Hey, we gotta have no supper. Sure we are. I tell you what, you go gather up some dead willow sticks. I got some beans here in my bin though. I'll open them up while you get a fire going. We can eat them cold. Sure. Yeah. I want ketchup with my beans. <laughs> well, we ain't got no ketchup. Now go gather up those sticks. And don't fool around on it. It's going to be dark before long. You just had to feel that girl's dress, didn't you? You just had to pet like it was a mouse. 
Well, how the hell did she know that you just wanted to feel it? How'd she know you just wanted to pet it like it was a mouse? I didn't mean to, George. Yes. I didn't mean to. Sure you didn't mean to. You didn't mean for her to be your buddy hell either, did you? You didn't mean for us to be sitting in that irrigation all ditch all day with guys all looking for us for guns. All the time it's something you didn't mean to do. <laughs> God damn it. I wish I could put you in a cage for a million ice and let them pet you. George? George? What? I was only fooling, George. I don't want no ketchup. <laughs> Jesus, Lenny, if I had some ketchup, you could have it. And if I had a thousand bucks, I'd buy you a bunch of roses, too. <laughs> there was ketchup here, George? I wouldn't eat none of it. I'd leave it all for you. You could pour so much of it on your beans, and I wouldn't eat none of it. When I think it's swell time, I could have it out you. I just go nuts. I never get no peace. You want us to go away and leave you alone, George? Where the hell would you go? Go up in the hills and I could live in a cave. Yeah? And what would you eat? You ain't got sense enough to find nothing to eat. Fine, thanks, George. I don't need, I don't need no fancy food with ketchup. I could play in the sun. It wouldn't bother me. If I had a mouse, George, I could keep it. Nobody take it away from me, neither. I've been mean to you, ain't I? I'm walking up hills, George, living in a cave. No, stay here with me. I want, I want you to stay here with me. I was just fooling you. The trouble with mice is that you always kill them because they're so little. I'll tell you, tell you what I'll do. First chance I get, I'll get you a paw. Okay? Maybe you wouldn't kill it. That'd be better. You could pet it harder. You know, George, if you don't want me, I'd go and live in a cave. No, stay here with me. Pray somebody shoot you for coyote you went up there by yourself. Besides, Aunt Claire wouldn't like you up there running around all by yourself, even if she is dead. <laughs> George? Yeah? Tell me, tell me you like you dumb before, would you? Tell me what? You know, what the rabbits? You ain't putting nothing over on me. Come on, George, tell me you like you dumb. You get a kick out of that, don't you? <coughs> All right, all right. Listen, I'll tell you. And then we'll roll out our beds and we'll eat our dinner, all right? What, what? Guys like us that go along on ranches are the loneliest guys in the world. They ain't got no family. They don't belong to them. They go to work on a ranch and build up a steak, and then they go into town and they blow that steak. Or you know what? They're pounding their tail on some other ranch. They ain't got nothing to look ahead to. Tell about us. Well, with us, it ain't like that. We got a future. We got someone to talk to that gives a damn about us. We don't have to sit in no bar room blowing in our jack just because we got no place else to go. If them other guys get thrown in jail, they can rap for all anybody gives a damn. But not us, George. But not us. You know why? Why? Because I got you to look after me. And you got me to look after you. That's why, George. That's why. Come on. Tell it. You got it in my heart. Why don't you tell it yourself? I forget it all the time, George. You tell it. Some of the time. Oh, come on, George. Tell how it's going to be. All right. We're going to get a little jack together. And we're going to buy ourselves a little place with a little piece of land, maybe a couple acres. We'll have ourselves a cow. And, and live off the fat of the land. Go on, George. Go on. Tell about the, tell about the rabbits. Well, we're going to have food, food, in the cages. Tell about, tell about the garden. What we're going to have in the garden. We're going to have a and big In the rabbits, in the cages. And George, tell about, tell about the rain in the winter. And the rain falling on the roof, and, and, 
in the cream is what in the milk. You know how thick the cream is. You got you got to cut it with a knife it's so thick. Come on, George. Tell all that. Why, why don't you do it yourself? You know all of it. It ain't the same when I tell it, George. All right, all right. Look, listen. We're gonna have a big vegetable patch and a and a red patch and some chicken. And when it rains in the winter, we're gonna say the hell with going to work. And we're just gonna fill up a big fire in the stove. We're gonna sit around and just listen to the rain falling down on the roof. Nuts. I ain't got no more time for this. What you gonna say tomorrow when we go see the boss? Um. Um. I ain't gonna say nothing. Good boy. All right. Say, maybe you're getting better. Maybe I can let you tend them rabbits. Especially if you remember as good as that. Remember? Lenny, I want you to take a look around here. I think you can remember this place? Ranch we're going to about a quarter mile up the road up there. You follow the river, you come right down here. Can you remember that? Sure, George, I can remember that. All right. If you just happen to get yourself in any trouble, I want you to come right back here. Come right back here and hide in the brush. Can you remember that? Come back here and hide in the brush. All right. But you ain't going to get in no trouble, are you? Because if you do, I ain't going to let you tend them rabbits. Sounds like you got it. Anyway, I hope so. Please. Oh, it's going to be nice sleeping here tonight, Lenny. Just looking up at the stars, smelling the night air. It's going to be nice here. Oh. Jesus, you feel free when you ain't got a job, if you ain't hungry. Oh, 
on this side. Boss was expecting you guys last night. Nor as hell, he wasn't here to go out this morning. You can have them two bunks right there. Coffee's on the stove. Help yourself. I'll take the top one. I don't want you falling down. Say, what the hell is this? I don't know. It says, positively kills lice, roaches, and other scourges. Now, what kind of bones you giving us? I don't want no pants rabbits. Well, I'll tell you what. Last guy to have this monk was a black stick. Hell of a nice fella. See the guys you want to meet. Heh, <laughs> used to wash his hands even after he had. Yes, I think he had pillow pigeons. Well, tell you what. This here black stick, ain't what white the kind of guy that put that stuff around and even if there wasn't no fuck. Tell you what he used to do. He'd peel his boiled potatoes and dig out every little spot before he had it. There's a red spot on an egg, he'd scrape it off. Find the quit about the food. That's the kind of guy way he was. Clean. <laughs> they used to dress up on Sundays even if he wasn't going no place. Put on a necktie even and then just <laughs> set the bunk up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What'd you say you quit for? Oh, uh, just quit the way a guy will. Uh, set it with the food, didn't give no other reason. Just Come in late night and says, give me my time, the way any guy would. Well, if there's any great backs in these bunks, you're going to hear about it from me. Well, boss will be in in a minute to write your names in. You know, he was sure burned when you wasn't here this morning. He come right in while we was eating breakfast. And he said, where the hell's them new men? Gave the table what tell too. Table what the nigger. Nigger, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Nice guy too. Had a crooked back where a horse kicked him. Boss gives him hell when he gets mad, but yeah, stable what don't give a damn about that. What kind of guy is this boss? Well, he's a pretty nice fella for a boss. You know, he gets mad sometimes, but he's pretty nice. Well, tell you what. You know what he done Christmas? He come in here with a whole gallon and he said, Drink hearty, boys! Christmas comes but once a year. The hell you say? You brought your whole gallon of whiskey? Yeah! <laughs> Jesus! We had fun. And uh, look, the nigger in that night. That little skinner, name of Smitty, look after the nigger. Felt pretty good, too. But the guy wouldn't let him use his feet, so the nigger got him. Well, if he could have used his feet, Smitty says, he would have killed that nigger. But the guy said, on account of nigger got a crooked back, so he can't use his feet. <laughs> this boss here, is he the owner of the place? Nah, superintendent. Big land company. Yes, sir. That night, he brought a whole gallon of whiskey right in here. He sat right over there, and he says, Great hearty, boys, he says. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote Murray and Reddy that I wanted two men for the morning. You got your work slips? Yes, sir. Right here, here you go. But it looks like it wasn't Murray and Reddy's fault. It says right here on the slip you was to be here for work this morning. Yeah, the bus driver gave us a bunk steer. We had to walk damn near ten miles. Bus driver said we was here when we wasn't. We couldn't come to the rides. Well, I had to send out the grain team short. Two buckers. Won't do any good to send you out now. For dinner, you'd get lost. What's your name? George Milton. George Milton. What's yours? His name's Lenny Small. Lenny Small. Let's see, it's the 20th, the noon, the 20th. <laughs> Where you boys been working? Up around me. What about you? Him too. Say, you're a big fella, ain't you? Yeah, he's a hell of a worker, too. Ain't much of a talk of the whiskey. No, he ain't. But he's a hell of a strong worker, strong as a bull. Strong as a bull. <laughs> well, you are, are you? Well, what can you do? Anything you want to. I said, what can you do? He can do anything. He's a 
a good skinner, you can, you can wrestle great bags, you can drive a cultivator, you can do anything. Just give him a try. Then why don't you let him answer? <laughs> yeah. Is he laughing about? He laughs when he gets excited. Yeah? Yeah, but, but he's a hell of a worker. I ain't saying he's right, because he ain't. But he can do anything you want. He can put a 400 pound bag. What are you trying to sell, Milton? Huh? I said, what's your stake in this guy? Are you taking his pay away from him? No, of course I do. Well, I've never seen one guy take so much trouble for another guy. Just like to know what your percentage is. He's my my cousin. I told his old lady I'd take care of him. He got kicked in the head by a horse when he was a kid. He ain't right, but he's all right. He can do anything he wants to. I don't take no brains to butt fire, but uh, you try to pull nothing, Milton. The job was done. What kind of job? Well, we was digging the cesspool. All right. You try to pull nothing because you can't get away with nothing. I've seen wise guys before. You go out with great teams after dinner. They're picking up bodies for the thrashing machines. You go out with Slim Steam. Slim? Yeah, the tall, slim skinner. You'll see him at dinner. Three days up in Frisco watching the boards. You didn't go to one of them uh, nightclubs while you were there, did you? No, we was looking for a job. Oh, that's a heck of a town if you got a little scratch in Frisco. Uh -huh. You never no scratch for nothing like that. Go out with the grain teams after dinner. When my men work hard, they get high. When they loaf, they uh, Bounce down the road on their can. You ask anybody about me. So you can well, keep your big flap shut, were you? I was going to do all the talking. You weren't going to say a word. You gave me a loss of the job. I forgot. You forgot. You always forget. Now he's got his eye out. Now we can't make no mistakes. We've got to be careful. Just keep your big guy your mouth shut from now on. He talked like a nice guy there at the last, George. Well, he's the boss, ain't he? He's the boss first, nice guy second. You don't have nothing to do with no boss. You just do your work, draw your pay, and keep your big mouth shut. Then you'll be all right. George. What? You said I was kicked in the head by a horse, George. Was I kicked in the head by a horse? It would be a hell of a lot better for everyone if you were. Give everybody a lot of trouble. You said I was your cousin. You know, that was a goddamn lie to me. Hell, if I was a relative of yours. Say, what you doing out here listening to us? No, I wasn't listening. Just standing in the shade, scratching my dog. Just come from swamping out the water. He was out there sticking your big nose into our business. I don't like nosy guys. No, I just come there. I wasn't listening to you guys. I ain't even interested in nothing you were saying. Guy in a ranch don't ever listen, or he don't ask no questions. Goddamn right he don't. Not if he wants to stay working on a ranch long. And it's a hell of a little dog you got there. Yeah. I <coughs> had yeah, her since he was a pup. I heard a cheap with him. Yeah, almighty, he was a good sheep dog. <laughs> uh, I didn't like the balls. Yeah, he seemed all right. Yeah, he's a pretty nice fella. Uh, you gotta take him right, of course. He's running this ranch. He don't take no nonsense. See, what time do you leave? 11.30? <coughs> Again, you see my old man? Yeah, it's here a minute ago. We're over the cookhouse, I think. I'll try to catch it. You the new guys my old man's been waiting Yeah, on? we just got here. Why is it he wasn't here this morning? We got off the bus too soon. Old man's got to get the grain out. You ever bought barley? Hell yeah, lots of it. I meant him. You ever bought barley? Sure he has. We <laughs> let the big guy talk. Suppose you don't want to talk. 
By Christ, he's got to talk when he spoke to. What the hell are you shoving in this ball? Him and me, we travel together. Oh, so it's that way. What? And you won't let the big guy talk. Is that it? You can talk if he's got something he wants to say to you. We just come in. Next time you speak when you spoke to, you understand? Hey, he didn't do nothing to you. You drawing cards this hand? I might. I'll see you get a chance to hand me anyway. Say, what the hell's he got on his shoulder? Why well, you didn't do nothing to him? Ah, uh, that's the boss's son. Curly's pretty handy. He's done quite a bit in the ring. The guy says he's pretty handy. Yeah, well, let him be handy. He don't have to take after Lenny like that. Lenny didn't do nothing to him. Well, tell you what. Curly's like a lot of little guys. He don't like big guys. He's all the time picking scraps with big guys. <laughs> kind of like he's mad at him because he ain't a big guy. Well, you've seen little guys like that, ain't you? Always scrappy. Yeah, I've seen plenty of them tough little guys. But this guy better not make no mistake about Lenny. Lenny and Andy see, but this curly punk's gonna get hurt if he messes with it. Well, curly's pretty handy. <laughs> you know, it never did seem right to me. Supposing curly jumps a big guy and licks him. Everybody says, with a game guy, curly is. Well, suppose he jumps him, then he gets licked. Everybody says the big guy should have picked in somebody's own side. I mean, like curly ain't giving nobody a chance. <laughs> yeah, we better watch out for Lenny. Lenny ain't handy, see, he ain't no fighter. But he's quick, he's big, he's strong, and he don't know the rules. Uh, you won't tell Curly I said none of this. He's sloppy. He don't give a damn. Won't ever get canned in this old man's boat. Well, I don't know. This Curly guy seems like a real son of a bitch to me. I don't like them mean little guys. You know, he's worse lately. Got married a couple weeks ago. Wife was over to Boston's house. Seems like he's worse than ever since he got married. You know, kind of like he's sitting on an ant and a big red ant come along and nipped him in the turn. You know, if he just feels so goddamn miserable, he'll strike at anything that moves. I'm kind of sorry for him. Maybe he's just showing off for his wife. Uh, have you seen that uh, glove he's got in his left hand? Yeah, I've seen that. That glove is full of Vaseline. Vaseline? What the hell for? Uh, Curly says he's keeping that hand soft for his wife. <laughs> That's a pretty dirty thing to be telling around. Uh, I, I ain't so sure. I've seen such funny things a guy will do to try to be nice. I ain't so sure. But you wait till you see Curly's wife. Yeah? Is she pretty? Yeah, she's pretty, but... Uh, but what? She got the eye. Married two weeks and already got the eye. <laughs> no wonder Curly's pants is all full of ants. I seen her give Slim the eye. Slim's a dirt line skinner, hell of a nice fella. Yeah. I seen her give Slim the eye, but Curly didn't see it. And I seen her give a skinner named with Carlson the eye. It looks like we's gonna have some fun. Uh, well, tell you what I think. Curly has married himself a tart. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be the first one. There's been plenty that done that. Well, I gotta be setting out the wash basin for the guys who came to be in before long. Uh, you guys gonna fuck barley? Yeah. You won't tell Curly I said none of this. Nah. You just wait to the see. See if she ain't a tar. <laughs> Come on. Look here, Lenny. This ain't no setup. You're gonna have trouble with that curly guy. You know what he's doing? He's, he's kind of feeling you out. Figure he's got you scared now. First chance he gets, he's gonna take a sock at you. I don't want no trouble, George. Don't want him sock me. I hate them kind of bastards. Seen plenty of them, too. You know, it's like the old guy says. He don't take no chances. He always figures to win. If he tangles with you, we're going to get canned. Don't you make no mistake about that. He's the boss's kid. You just stay the hell away from him. Don't you have nothing to do with him. Don't even talk to him. If he comes in here, you go clear to the other side of the bunkhouse and you stay there. 
Now, you remember that? George, I don't want no trouble. I ain't done nothing to him. It ain't gonna do you no good if Curly sets himself up as a fighter. You just stay away from him, all right? Can you remember that? Sure, <coughs> George. I ain't gonna say a word. Here come the guys. Now, don't say nothing. You're mad, isn't you, George? I ain't mad at you, but mad at this here curly bastard. I wonder if we should get a stake build up, maybe a hundred bucks. You just stay away from him, all right? I ain't gonna say a word, George. All right. Don't you let him pull you in. But if the son of a bitch shot you, you let him have it. Remember I told you what to do? You told me if I, if I get you in trouble, you won't let me send out rabbits. That's not what I mean. You remember where we, where we slept last night down by the river? Oh, sure, George. I remember that. All right. If you get in any trouble, you go down there and you hide in the brush. Hide in the brush. That's right. You hide in the brush and you stay in until I come for you. You don't let nobody see you. Just hide in the brush. I hide in the brush until you come. Say that over and over. I'm hide in the brush. Forget. Hide in the brush until you come. I have a portion to you come. All right, if you get in any trouble. If I get in any trouble. I'm looking for Curly. He was here a little bit ago, but he went along. You're the new fellas that just come, ain't you? Yep. Yeah. Sometimes Curly's been here. Well, he ain't here now. Well, if he ain't here now, I guess I'll better put someplace else. If I see him, I'll let him know you was looking for him. Well, you can't blame a person for looking. That kind of depends on what she's looking for. I'm just looking for somebody to talk to. Do you never want to talk to somebody? Okay. We got to be tired in our stall. Hi, Slim. Hello. I'm trying to find Curly. Well, he ain't trying very hard. I, I see him going in your house. I guess I better get going. Jesus, what a tramp. <laughs> right, so that's what Curly picks for a while, huh? <laughs> boy, oh boy. You smell that stink she had on hers? I can still smell it. You don't have to, you don't have to see her know she's around. <laughs> she's pretty. Yeah, she's sure hiding it, too. I got a pair of punks. Don't know a barley bag from a blue 
ball? Check. You guys ever bucked in a barrel? Hell yeah. I ain't nothing to write home about. That big guy over there, he can put up more grain alone than most pears can. You guys travel around together? Yeah, yeah, we kind of kind of look out after each other. He ain't too bright, but he's a hell of a worker. Nice fellow, too. They ain't kind of known each other for a long time. Huh. You know, there ain't many guys that travel around together. I don't know why. Maybe everybody in the whole damn world is scared of each other. Well, you go around with a guy, you kind of get used to it. And it ain't, just ain't no fun anymore going around alone. Hello, Slim. These guys just come. Glad to meet you. My name's Carl. George Milton. This here's Lenny Small. Glad to meet you. You ain't so small. <laughs> He ain't small at all. <laughs> Meant to ask you, Slim, how's your bitch? Seen she wasn't under your wagon this morning. She slagged her pups last night. No, no. Turn around for her right off. She couldn't feed that many. Got five of them left, huh? Yeah, five. I kept the biggest. What kind of dogs you reckon they're going to be? I don't know. Some kind of shepherd, I guess. That's the most kind of scene around here when she's in heat. Uh, I had an Airedale once, and this guy down the road had one of the little white floozy dogs. Well, she was in heat, and he locked her up. Well, my, my Airedale, I think Tom was, well, damn near ate a wood shed down to the roots to get to her. Guy comes over one day, he's sore as hell. He says, I wouldn't mind my bitch having bumps, but this morning she slang a litter of Shetland ponies. <laughs> <laughs> Got five of them left, huh? Gonna keep all of them? I don't know. Gotta keep a while so they can drink Lulu's milk. Well, looky here. I've been thinking. Hey, doggy. Candy's so goddamn old, you can hardly walk. Yeah, it stinks like hell. Every time he brings them into the bunkhouse, I can smell them two or three days. Supposing we get candy to shoot his old dog and give him one of your pups to raise up. God almighty, I can smell that dog a mile off. He ain't got no teeth. Can't eat. Candy feeds the milk. Can't shoot nothing else. And leave him around on the string so. He don't bump into things, yeah. Oh, there she goes. You guys go to Guam. Wally Swiss on you. Hold down the left in a couple minutes. George! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll ask him. A brown and white one, George. A brown and white one. Come on, let's go get something to eat. I don't know if he's got a brown and white one. You gotta ask him right away before he kills them all. See the girl around here? Yeah, she was in here a little bit ago. What the hell was she doing here? Said she was looking for you. Which way did she go? I don't know. I didn't watch her go. Jesus Christ, Lenny, you know what? I think I'm gonna tangle with that bastard myself. I hate his guts. <laughs> Come on, let's go, there ain't gonna be nothing to eat. Come on. What? A brown and white one, George. A brown and white one? Yeah, 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 let's go.
He damn near killed his partner, fucking Barlow. He take his end of that sack, pretty near kill his partner. God Almighty, I've never seen such a strong guy. Well, you just tell him what you want him to do, and he'll do it. As long as it don't take no figuring.
hangs on to the dress because it's the only thing he knows how to do. The hell? Well, she starts walking her full head off. And, and I hear all the noise because I'm right close so I can run. <coughs> By that time, Lenny's, Lenny's scared to death. You know, I had to hit him over the head with a fence because just to make him let go. So what happens then? Well, she runs to the law and says she's been raped. So the guys in weed head out to Lynchland. And there we sat all the rest of that day in the irrigation ditch underwater, just our heads sticking out under the grass that grows out the side of the ditch. Nightfall come and we run the hell out of there. Didn't hurt the girl none, huh? Nah, I just scared the hell out of her. He's a funny guy. A funny, yeah. One time me and him were walking down the road. Hey, Lenny, how do you like your pup? He's brown and white, George, just like I wanted. Lenny. What, George? I told you not to bring that pup in here. What pup, George? I ain't got no pup.
read that right there. Oh, I don't want to read nothing. Yeah, I'll be over in a minute, Candy. Come on. Read this, Slim. Did you see that? Go ahead, read it. Read it out loud. What is it? Just read it. Dear editor, I read your mag for six years, and I think it is the best on the market. I like stories by Peter Rand. I think he is a wingy, a wingy. Do you have a small or like, like the, the dark rider? I don't write many letters. Just thought I would tell you I think your mag is the best damn worth I ever spent. What do you want me to read that for? Well, just keep on reading. Read the name at the bottom. Yours, our success, William Tanner. Come on, Kenny, what you say? What do you want me to read that for? You don't remember Bill Tanner? Worked here about three months ago. Little guy. Drove a cultivator. Yeah, that's the guy. Look, you can you let, let me take the old devil out right now and, and get it over with. Ain't nothing left for him. Can't eat, can't see, can't hardly walk. Tomorrow you can pick one of Slim's pup. Sure, I got a lot of them. You ain't got a gun. The hell I ain't. I got a mooger. It won't hurt him none at all. Maybe tomorrow. Let's wait till tomorrow. I don't see no reason for it. Can't sleep in here with him stinking around in the place. Better let him go, Ken. All right. Take him. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. That's your stuff. Come on, boy. Come on. That's your work. Carl's? Yeah? One of my lead mules got a bad hoof. Got to get some. Some power. Any of you guys want to play some euchre? I'll lay out a few more, yeah.
Well, might as well get to it. Yeah. Say, you guys really came here to work, huh? I don't see how you mean. Well, come in on a Friday. Still two work days before Sunday. I don't see how you're figuring. Well, you would if you're used to a big ranch. When a guy comes to look over a ranch, he comes in on a Saturday afternoon. That way, he gets Saturday night supper, three meals on Sunday, and he can quit Monday morning right after breakfast without even turning in. Well, we you, why you come in on a Saturday at noon, you got to work a day and a half no matter how you figure it. Me and Lenny's going to be sticking around for a while. we got to build up the steak. Mr. Slim. Huh? Oh. Hello, Chris. What's the matter? You told me to warm up the tire for that mule's foot. I got it warm now. Oh. Sure, Chris. I'll, I'll come right out. Put it on. I'll have to take care of that for you, Mr. Slim. No, I'll take care of my own team. Mr. Slim. Yeah. That big new guy's been messing around your pups in the barn. Well, he ain't doing no harm. I give one of them pups. Well, uh, I just, just thought I'd tell you. He's been taking them out of the nest and handling them. It just won't do him no good. Oh, he won't hurt him. The crazy bastard's making too much fuss out in the barn, just throwing the hell out of it. Well, see the new kid yet? What new kid? What Curly's new wife? Yeah, I seen him. <laughs> well, and she a little? <laughs> I ain't seen that much of her. Well, stick around. Keep your eyes open. You're gonna see plenty of her. I've never seen anybody like her. Why, she just keeps on working on everybody. It seems like she's even working on the stable book. I don't know what the hell she wants. Been any trouble since she got here? Well, now, you know, I see what you mean, but, uh, well, there ain't been no trouble. Of course, you know, she's only been here a couple of weeks. Curly's got yellow jackets in his drawers. <laughs> but that's all so far. But you know what it seems like? Every time the guys is around, she shows up. She says she's looking for Curly. Or she thought she'd have something behind and she's looking for that. Huh. Seems like she just can't keep away from the guys. And Curly, why? He's running around like a cat looking for a dirt road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there ain't been no trouble yet. Big ranch like this with a bunch of guys on it, no place for a girl, especially one like her. Well, now, is she giving you any ideas? Why don't you come into town with us guys tomorrow night? Why, what you got going on? Oh, the usual. We like to go to old Susan's place. Oh, it's a hell of a nice place. And old Susie, oh, she ever up that? <laughs> Always cracking with the jokes. <laughs> like she says when we were coming up her front steps last Saturday night. Susie opens up the door, takes a look, and yells over her shoulders, hey, girls, get your coats out. Here comes the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, old Susie never never talks dirty. Not a word. She's got five girls there. Five of them. What's that such a bag? Two of them. Two and a half. Shot of whiskey for 15 cents. No. Susie's got these nice chairs. Oh, they are so soft. If a fellow doesn't want to fly, why, he can sit in one of them there chairs and have a couple or three shots and just close the time away. Um, 
She don't give a damn. Oh, no. She don't hurry anybody. I'm true. <laughs> and she don't kick you out if you don't want to clock. Well, I might go in and check the joint over. Why, sure. Come on along. We'll have a hell of a good time. Why, Miss Susie cracking all them jokes all the time. Like she said this one time, she said, I knew people that if they had a rug rag on the floor and a cubie down there behind the photograph, why, they think they're running a powder house. A powder house. <laughs> of course, you know, she's talking about old glasses, playing good old <coughs> glass. Oh, and Susie would say, I know what you boys want. She says, my girls is clean. She says, ain't no water in my whiskey. <laughs> she says, if any of you guys want to go look at the cute gal lamp, I'll take a chance on getting burned. Well, you know where you can go. <laughs> Susie said, why, there's guys walking around here bowling because they like to look at the cute gal lamp. That's Gladys' house she's talking about, right? Yeah. Hi, it's a dark night. What? What? Who's that the same, George? 
Both ends the same. Why are both ends the same? I don't know. It's just how they make them. What was Slim doing out in Byron when you saw Slim? Yeah, you said he was out there. He told you not to bet that puck so much. What was he doing out there? He had a bucket of tar and a paper. I don't know what for. You didn't see that girl come out there like she come in here today. No, she never come out there, George. All right. Give me a good cat house any day. Guy can go in there and get drunk, get everything all over with all at once. No fuss, no mess. And you know just what's going to set him back, too. He starts to like buckshot to a guy. Do you remember Andy Cushman when he was in grammar school, same time as us? The one. His old lady made the hot cakes? That's the one. Yeah. Well, you can remember if there's something in it to eat, can't you? <laughs> well, Andy's up in San Quentin right now on account of a tarp. George? Yeah? How long is it going to be before we get that little place and we live off the Now we got to build up a little stick. We're broke. Next. I'll 
You know where they is a place like that? Yeah, suppose I do. What's it to you? You don't have to tell me where it's at. It might be any place. Yeah, that's right. Just couldn't find it in a hundred years. How much do they want for a place like that? I could get it for 600 bucks. The folks that own it is broke. The old lady needs mess. What's it to you anyway? You got nothing to do with us. Uh, I ain't much good since I lost my hand. I lost my hand right here in the rent. That's why they didn't care me to give me a job to swamp. And they give me $250 because I lost my hand. And I got another 50 saved up right in the bank right now. That's 300 And I got another 40 coming at the end of the month. Tell you what. Supposing, supposing I was to go in with you guys. Well, that, that's $340 I put in. Uh, I know I ain't much good, but I could wash dishes and tend the chickens and hold a garden some. How would that be? I don't know. <clears throat> it was always just me and Lenny that was going to do it. I didn't. I didn't ever think about bringing nobody else in there. I'd make a will. Leave my share to you guys in case I kicked off. I ain't got no relations or nothing. You guys got any money? Maybe we could go there right now. <laughs> Hell, we ain't got ten bucks between us. Say, but me and Lenny was to work a month. Not spend nothing. That'd be a hundred bucks. That'd make four forty. I bet you we could swing it for that. You two could go there and get it started and I can get a job and make up the difference. I bet we could swing it. I bet we could. Uh, lost my hand four years ago. They'll can me pretty soon. Just as soon as I can't swamp out the bunkhouses no more, they'll put me on the counter. Maybe if I had to give you guys the money, you'd let me hoe in the garden even if I wasn't no good at it. And I can wash dishes and no chicken stuff like that, but I'd be on our own place. I'd be left to work on our own place. Said he wasn't no good to himself or nobody else. But I'm that way. Nobody will shoot me. And I wish somebody would. They won't do nothing like that. I won't have no place to go and I can't get no more jobs. <laughs> Don't say a word. Nothing to nobody. 
Nothing to nobody. You know, it seems to me I can almost smell that carnation stuff that goddamn tar dumps on itself. Who are you calling a tar? I'm coming from a nice home. I was brought up by nice people. Nobody never got to me before I was married. I was straight. It's good. I was, you know, Curly. You know you're going to stay with me if you wasn't sure. I tell you, Curly, sure. You got no right to call me a tar. Well, if you ain't a tar. What you always hanging out with the guys for? You got a house and you got a man. Listen, we don't want no trouble from you. Sure, I got a man. He ain't never home. I got nobody to talk to. I got nobody to be with. You think I can just sit home and do nothing but cook for Curly? I want to see somebody. Just see him and talk to him. There ain't no woman. I can't walk into town. And Curly don't take me to no dances now. I tell you, I just want to talk to somebody. If you're just being friendly, why don't you always give it out the eye, flopping your can all around? I just want to be nice. You ain't got to get mad about it, do you? I ain't mad. I just don't want no more questions, that's all. I just don't want no more questions. Look, get the hell out of here. I don't want any trouble from you. Just keep going. Carlson's going to take you 
getting to a doctor. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt her. I just don't want to me. It's not your fault. I don't have to be afraid no more. Let's uh, see your hands.
Still says I ain't to be petting so much. Well, you can take him out of your mess all the time. I wonder if all the lady don't move him someplace else. She don't care. She lets me.
that job. You know he's coming back. What if you ain't got nobody? Suppose you went over to the fuck house and played for me because you was black. How you feel about that? Suppose you had to sit out here and read books. Sure, you could play horseshoes until it got dark, but then you got to read books. Books ain't no good. But I need somebody to, to, to be near him. The guy goes nuts if he ain't got nobody. No matter who it is, as long as he's with you. I'll tell you, big fellow. The guy gets too lonely, he gets sick. George is coming back. Maybe, maybe George is back already. Maybe I better go see him first. Listen, I'm sorry. George will be back. George will come back. I was talking about myself. George will come back. George won't leave me. George won't ever leave me. I remember when I was a little boy in my daddy's chicken ranch. I had two bad brothers, Rufus and home. My brothers were always near me, always there. Slept right in the same room. Right in the same bed, all three. We had a blackberry patch, strawberry patch, alfalfa patch. Ah, uh, I remember like yesterday. Me and my grandbrothers used to turn the chickens out in the alfalfa patch early on a sunny morning. Hot damn. All them chickens, they, they scurried around there. Peck, 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 peck. Oh, there's lots of joy amongst them chickens. Happiness ain't even the word for it. Them chickens had the time of their life. <laughs> Me and my brothers, Rufus and Homer, would climb high up on the fence and just sat there and watch them. <laughs> my, my. White chickens they want. We're going to have Mel Belfort. George says so. You're nuts. You're <laughs> nuts, too. You asked George. You're nuts. I've seen them come. I've seen them go. I've seen hundreds of men come by on the roads and on the ranches, fiddles on their backs, and that same damn thing in their heads. Hundreds of them. They come, they quit, and they go on. And every damn one of them had a little piece of land in his head. And never a damn one of them gets it. Just like heaven. Everybody wants a little piece of land. Nobody never get to heaven, and nobody get no land. Yeah, we are too. It's just in your head. You guys all the time talk about it, but it's just in your head. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's up there. Maybe Slim. Hey, you like you Slim? You ain't went to town. Hey, so you seen Lenny? You mean the big guy? Yeah, seen him around any place? Well, he's in here. Uh, listen, Lenny, uh, I've been figuring something out about the place. Uh, come on in if you want. Uh, I don't know. Of course, if you, uh, if you want me to. Ah, come on in, everybody else is coming in. <laughs> you might just as well get to be a race track. <laughs> we got a nice, cozy little place here. Must be nice having a room to yourself this way. Well, with a uh, smoldering manure pile just outside my window, all to myself. <laughs> <laughs> you said about the place? You know. I've been here a long time. Crook's been here a long time. I've never been in this room before. Guys, know we generally don't come in a colored man. Nobody ever been here but Slim. Tell me about the place.
You won't get no land. You guys all the time talk about it, but you won't get no land. You'll be a swamper here until they take you out of the box. I see too many guys. Uh, we're going to do what George says we are. We got the money right now. Yeah? Well, where's George right now? In town? In the cat house? That's where your money's going. I've seen it happen too many times. George ain't got the money in town, and the money's in the bank. Me, Lenny, and George. We're going to have a room to ourselves. We're going to have a dog and chickens. We're, we're going to have a green corn and make a cow. <laughs> you see, you got the money? Well, we got most of it. We got a little bit more to get. Have it all in one month. Now, George already got the land picked out, too. You know, I've never seen guys really do it. I've seen guys, I've seen guys near in danger in themselves. They, they hunger for land, but every time a cat house or blackjack game would snatch it from them. Now, if you guys would want hands to work with them, this is key. Why well, come and lend a hand? I ain't so crippled that I can't work like a son of a gun if I really wanted to. Couldn't go to bed like I told you to, could you, Lenny? No. No, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta be out here in society, flapping your gums around, holding a damn convention. Out. Come there. 
way a colored man's wrong. I want no trouble. You don't want to ask me nothing. You've already got a husband. You've got no call to come out here fooling with other men causing trouble. I think that's what he allows a bit about too good for me. Now, I tell you, I could come pictures. God want to put me in pictures right in Hollywood. I'll just come out here to ask somebody. I had enough. You ain't wanted here. We told you you went calling us little stiff. You got fuzzy ideas about what us guys amounts to. You ain't got sense enough to see that we ain't no bindle stiffs. Supposing you could get us, kid. Supposing you could. You think we just hit the highway and take any two-bit job? You don't know. We got a ranch to go to. <laughs> and we got a house and fruit trees. And we got friends. You That's what we got! They are both go to. Too bad you being so bad in a drinking son of a Bible class. Maybe she could just ask Pussy. Would she come ask me? Then get the hell out of here. I don't think she'd come ask me. No.
why you got to go and get killed. You ain't so little as mice. I didn't bought you too hard. Um, George won't let me tend those rabbits. Finds out you got killed. It's like no bad thing. And I gotta go on. Hide in the brush. I tell George I found him dead. George knows. He always knows. He'll say, You done it! You done it! Don't try to put nothing over on me. And he'll say, It's just for that. You don't get to tend them and you know what's. God damn. You ain't so little as mice. No, he won't let me. He won't let me. He wasn't big enough. You just wasn't big enough. They told me and told me you wasn't. I just know. I didn't know you'd get took so easy. It wasn't nothing to George. You little son of a bitch. You wasn't, you didn't mean nothing to George. You little son of a bitch. Lenny! Lenny, where are you at? <coughs> Thought I'd find you here. Listen, I've been talking to sleep. It's okay. We ain't gonna get the cane. Now, Sid has been talking to the boss. He told the boss you died with good bucket. You know the boss gotta move that grain out. <laughs> Remember what hell the boss gave us last night? He said, he got his eye on you and George, but you ain't gonna get the can. Oh, and say, <laughs> boss give Curly's wife hell too. <laughs> told her never come around to men go war. Give her worse hell than give you and George. <laughs> Ain't you glad? Sure. You're not sick. Well, I gotta go kill George. I'll, I'll see you later. Tomorrow I'll be gone. You can let them run over me. 
we can have a little place in the grass bed. I come from the Salinas. Hey, man, so there's like this. Well, a show comes here one time, and I talked to a guy that was in it. That's that it was a show. Of course, my old lady wouldn't let me because I was only 15. But I wouldn't be no place like this if I don't want the show. Some people got kind of coarse hair. You take curly. His 
tastes just like wine. Mine? Mine is soft. Hide in the brush. Hide in the brush until George comes. Oh, George is going to be mad. Hide in the brush. Hide in the brush. Things are bad enough. I got to hide the brush. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into the bunkhouse. 
and you come out and you act like you just seen him. All right, will you do that for me? So the guys want the guy anything to do with this? Sure, sure, little George. All right, now listen, I'm gonna go into the bunkhouse. A few minutes, wait a few minutes, and then you come out yelling your head off like you just seen her. Now you got that? All right, now listen, I'm gonna go down. All right. Big son of a bitch done. <laughs> I know he done. Why everybody else was outside throwing mushrooms. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get my rifle and I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch myself. I'm gonna shoot him in the guts. Well, 
I guess we got to get one. Where do you think you might have went? I don't know. I guess we got to get it. Could we just let him go? You know, you know, he, you know, he don't, didn't do this for me, miss. You know, he's crazy. Maybe we could just bring him in. If we could only keep Curly in. But Curly wants to shoot. It's a post. They lock him up, George, and strap him down and, and put him in a cage. That ain't no good. I know. I think there's only one way. I know. One way to get him out. I know. Cassie stole my loser. It ain't in my bag. All right, you guys. The nigger's got a shotgun. You take that, Carlson. Now listen up. The only cover around here is down by the river. He could have went there. Shoot for his guts. That'll double him over. Why well, you got a gun? Go up to the house and talk to my old man. Get one from him. All right, let's go, guys. You're coming with us, fella. Yeah, I'll come with you, Curly, but listen. The poor bastard's crazy. Don't shoot him. He didn't, he didn't know what he was doing. Don't shoot him. He's got Carlson's Luger, ain't he? Maybe Carlson lost his gun. Nah, I seen it this morning. It's been took. Curly. Maybe you better stay here with your wife.
bury him. I didn't forget. Come right here, hide in the brush. Wait till George comes for me. Where are them guys going, George? They're going hunting. Why are we going with them? I like hunting. Don't. Don't no, no make no difference. Is it because I've done something bad, George? It don't make no difference. Is that why we can't go with them, George? It don't make no difference, Lenny. Lenny, sit down. Sit down right here.
If I didn't have you, I could live so easy. When the end of the month comes, I take my 50 bucks and go into town. And I can stay in the cab. Come on, George. Are you going to give me no more help? No. No. If you don't want me, George, I can, I can go away. No, 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 no. I, I want you to stay here, man. Stay with me. Tell about us, George. Tell about us. Tell about the other guys in the house. Guys like us, they go around in ranches. The loneliest guys in the world. We go into town and make a stake and they blow that stake. They got nobody in the world to give a hoot to hell about them. But not us, George. But not us. But not us. And why? Because I got you. And I got you, George. And we got each other. That's who gives a hoot hell about us, George. Thank <laughs> you. 